Welcome to a deep dive into a question uh, many of you might be pondering. Which media server truly reigns supreme for your personal collection? You know, movies, shows, music. Today, we're attacking the distinctions between the, well, the big three contenders, Plex, Jellyfin, and MB. Yeah, it's a really fascinating space because, you know, while these platforms all aim to do the same basic thing, letting you stream your own stuff, yeah. their features, their privacy models, um, even the user experiences, they vary quite a bit. We're not just talking about like getting files from A to B. It's the whole ecosystem around it and how much control you actually keep. Exactly. So our mission today is really to cut through some of that noise, give you a shortcut maybe to understanding what each one offers. We'll look at the strengths, the weaknesses, and you know who each one might be best suited for so you can figure out what fits your needs, your priorities. Think of us as guides maybe. Okay, let's get into it. Right, let's kick things off with Plex. Our research uh, consistently points to this one as the most popular and widely adopted option. It feels like it's almost become the default name for personal media streaming for a lot of folks. And, you know, there's a good reason for that. Plex really does shine with its incredibly clean, very user-friendly interface. I think it's secret sauce, really, is yeah. how it automatically pulls in all that rich metadata. We're talking movie posters, cast lists, uh, plot summaries, album art, track info for music. It basically transforms, you know, a boring folder of files into something that looks and feels like Netflix. And that kind of plug and play magic, that's what hooks a lot of users. Even people who aren't super tech savvy, you just point it at your media. And mostly, it just works, makes everything look nice and organized. That convenience factor seems huge. And the device compatibility, it's legendary, isn't it? You can watch your stuff on just an incredibly wide range of devices. Uh, yeah. Smartphones, pretty much any smart TV, streaming sticks like Roku or Fire TV, uh, even gaming consoles, Xbox, PlayStation. Yeah, all of those. That broad compatibility means you can usually get to your library on almost any screen you own, at home or even when you're out, mm. without much hassle. And for a lot of people, and that seamless access everywhere, that's priority number one. Makes sense. And that reach, it's not an accident. Yeah. Plex's whole setup is really designed for robust remote streaming. So you can access your library anywhere you've got internet, just like you know Netflix or Hulu. It even intelligently transcodes your media on the fly. Ah, transcoding. That's important, right. Adjusting the quality. <laughs> exactly. It adjusts the quality based on your internet speed, the device you're using. Mm. It's crucial for smooth playback, especially remotely. Beyond that, it does smart library organization. You can make custom collections. It tracks your watch progress on shows. You can even share specific libraries with friends or family. They get their own profiles. Yeah. And like you mentioned, if you're into it, live TV integration is there too if you have an antenna and tuner. Okay, so Plex sounds incredibly polished, loads of features, mm -hmm. but it almost sounds too good to be completely free, doesn't it? You mentioned the Plex Pass earlier. What are the key things that actually require that subscription? And who really needs it? That's, yeah, that's the crucial point. Plex does have a really powerful free tier. You can definitely set up a server and stream on your home network for free. But a lot of those standout premium feeling features we just talked about, things like hardware transcoding, which makes remote streaming much smoother, uses less server power, yeah. Uh, mobile sync for offline viewing, like downloading shows to your phone for a flight. Oh, okay, offline viewing, yeah. Right some advanced live TV stuff, even managing multiple users within your home easily. Those are locked behind the Plex Pass. So while the basic experience is free, the full experience, especially if you travel, have multiple family members using it, or really want that rock solid remote access. Well, it does come with a price tag. It's an investment. It makes it feel a bit more like a service you subscribe to, not just software you own outright. Got it. So Plex is the popular kid, super user-friendly, broad appeal, but potentially needs that subscription for the best bits. Where do we go if our priorities are different? Like maybe absolute control or open source principles? Well, that leads us straight to Jellyfin. And it operates on a, just a fundamentally different philosophy. Jellyfin is completely free and open source. And that's a, just a technical detail, right? It really changes your relationship with the software and your media. With Jellyfin, there is zero subscriptions ever. You get full control over your media, your server, and critically, your data. Your data, you mean like viewing habits. Exactly. Your viewing habits, what's in your library, it all stays strictly with you. Mm -hmm. There's no company collecting that info, using it for ads or anything else. That's a huge difference in today's world, you know? Yeah, that sounds incredibly appealing, especially for privacy-conscious folks or maybe people who just enjoy tinkering 
customizing their setup, it feels kind of like an antidote to all the walled gardens we see in digital content now. Precisely. If you're someone who actually likes to get under the hood, yeah. Jellyfin is like an amazing playground. Because it is open source, the community is constantly developing it, adding plugins, offering customization options. It's huge. You can really shape it to be exactly what you want. Themes how metadata gets pulled in, integrations with home automation. Wow. Gives you this level of sort of user sovereignty. You're not just consuming, you're mm -hmm. actively building your own media hub. Okay, that promise of freedom and control sounds fantastic. But what's the practical side? Does that freedom mean it's maybe harder to set up, especially compared to Plex's plug and play feel? That's definitely a key question for potential users. Um, while Jellyfin's interface is always getting better, it's generally maybe not quite as polished or immediately intuitive as Plex, right out of the box. Yeah. And remote access. That definitely needs a bit more technical know-how. How so? Well, you're usually responsible for setting things up manually, like port forwarding on your router, maybe setting up something called a reverse proxy or using VPNs. It gives you total control over how your traffic flows, unlike Plex, which often uses their own relay service sometimes. But yeah, it means getting your hands a bit dirty with network settings. Right. More hands-on. More hands-on. Exactly. But the trade-off is massive, right? You get this powerful solution for zero cost. No feature limits, no paywalls. Everything Jellyfin can do, you can use. It's really a pure freedom play. It prioritizes that user control, that community power. Okay. So we have Plex, the popular polished one, potentially with a subscription. Jellyfin, the free, open source, total control option, but maybe more technical. What about the middle ground? That brings us to MB, right? It seems to aim for a bit of both worlds. Yeah, MB tries to bridge that gap. It definitely presents a very modern, sleek UI. Visually, it's often seen as a step up from maybe the more basic look of some open source projects. Mm -hmm. You get fluid animations, nice media previews. It feels quite integrated across its apps. It's aiming for that sort of commercial product polish that many people like. And features. It also offers advanced features that appeal to specific users. Things like really robust parental controls, you know, letting you finely tune what different users like kids can see. And live TV integration, which, as we said, is a big deal for many trying to consolidate everything. Its history is interesting, though. You mentioned Jellyfin is fully open source, but MB, our sources say, it used to be open source but is now partially closed. Huh. That sounds like a big shift. What did that actually mean for users? Well, that shift kind of tells a story about, you know, the challenges of keeping these big projects going. For MB, it meant that some of its most appealing features, including those detailed parental controls, some advanced user management stuff, and certain live TV features, they now require an MB Premier subscription. Ah, okay. So similar to Plex Pass in a way. Pretty similar model, yeah. Well, MB still offers a strong free tier, it's strategically put some of its best, most advanced features behind that paywall, just like Plex does. So it really positions itself as that middle ground. You get some of the polished and advanced options like Plex, maybe with slightly different features prioritized, but potentially at a cost. It caters to users who might want more than Jellyfin's totally free offering, but maybe aren't fully sold on Plex or just prefer MB's specific way of doing things. Less about pure freedom, maybe more about a flexible feature set with premium options. Right. Okay, so we've covered Plex, Jellyfin, and MB, the popular one, the open source champ, and the hybrid. Let's try and boil this down. What does this all mean for you, the listener, trying to choose the right server for your digital life? Okay, let's summarize. If a super smooth, incredibly easy user experience is really your number one priority, if you want something that, you know, just works, looks fantastic, runs on everything with minimal fuss, then Plex is probably your best bet, especially if you're okay considering that Plex Pass subscription for the advanced stuff offline sync, the best transcoding, mobile access, those live TV perks. It's the most polished, ready to go solution, great for convenience. But if privacy is paramount, if you deeply value that open source freedom and want complete total control over your media and crucially, your data. Then Jellyfin is the clear winner. Yeah. Yes, it might mean a slightly more technical setup, maybe a bit of a learning curve for remote access, but the payoff is huge. Total autonomy, zero subscription fees ever, and the power to truly customize it. It's really for the purists, the DIY crowd, and anyone who's just uncomfortable handing over their media data to a third party. Okay. And MB, who's the ideal MB user? MB fits if you're looking for more of a balanced experience, something that gives you a modern interface, advanced features like those detailed parental controls or live TV, with a mix of free core functions and those optional premium upgrades via MB Premier. It tries to get the best of both worlds, a solid UX, powerful features, even if some require payment eventually. 
It's for someone who wants that blend of convenience and customization, maybe needs a specific feature MB does well, without going fully to one extreme or the other. Makes perfect sense. There really isn't a single best one, is there? The choice really boils down to your personal priorities. Is it ease of use? Is it absolute freedom and data control? Or that kind of careful blend? Understanding these differences, that's the key to really owning your media experience. So as you can see, each platform really does bring something unique to the table. They're designed for different kinds of users, different expectations, and it's actually empowering, I think, to know you have these choices outside of just the mainstream streaming giants. It really is. And it kind of begs an interesting question, doesn't it? In a world that feels increasingly dominated by subscription services, Netflix, Disney Plus Line, all of them services that dictate what you watch and when. What does the continued innovation and the really dedicated user bases for these personal media servers like Plex, Jellyfin, and MB? What does that tell us? What does it say about the enduring value people place on truly owning and controlling their own digital content? Is this like a quiet counter movement against those media silos mm. or just a really advanced way for enthusiasts to manage their collections? Mm. Definitely something to chew on. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive.